Hi, Lisa. How are you? Hello. I'm good. Uh, so to start, I think I'm to set the scene. I am very much a Jim Henson Company kid. A lot of my favorite movies and characters as a kid was were characters created by the Jim Henson Company. But for you, Dark Crystal has recently kind of had a resurgence thanks to both the show and everyone going back and rewatching the movie. What has been the most exciting part of all of that for you as a creative to kind of see everyone revisiting something that and now has generations of love behind it? Dark Crystal was one of my father's most spectacular productions and it was definitely the most ambitious on the point from the point of view of puppetry so I don't think you will ever see a more in-depth you know complicated rich production featuring only puppets than the dark crystal of course labyrinth has incredible puppetry but it also has people mm -hmm. so the dark crystal has a special place for being probably the most ambitious puppetry on film and then we had we had a lot of fun going back and making a prequel series to it for netflix um i think one of the most interesting things about dark crystal is it's like a very robust fantasy world and it has a sense of past present and future like and everything that's ever been done with Dark Crystal, whether it was a graphic novel or a novel novel or a YA novel or the television show and the film, everything is canon. Like we put all of it together and we say it all happened in that universe. So it's always fun for me to develop anything with Dark Crystal because I'm kind of going to revisit a real place and, you know, mm -hmm. a universe that that has history, it has it has future, it has, you know, deep, deep development. So it's really fun to do projects with Dark Crystal. Yeah. And I do think it has this ability to unlock this childlike response to it, no matter what age you are. Cause I remember watching the show and I think it was Mark Hamill and the way he said it, but I just kept being like the ski skis, they're ski skis. And like, that's how he labeled these characters, which I was like, it's very childlike of me to be like, they're the ski skis and like, <laughs> not think of it any other way for you what has it been like having the response of people who loved dark crystal as kids now getting to come back and like share that love as an adult well i hope they'll share it with their kids when their kids are old enough not to be afraid of it um and also when dark crystal was made i think kids were exposed to less you know scary or you know dark things and Dark Crystal to me doesn't even seem scary compared to what children watch nowadays. But when it came out, it was considered like, why are the people who did the Muppets doing this scary, this scary production? And, you know, but because it was not just scary, but real, it has the strength of a really good fairy tale where, you know, like a really good Grimm's fairy tale where the witch is is evil you know <laughs> the dark crystal has that rich fairy tale quality that kids do benefit from and they and they and they love that kind of they love being scared in that way yeah and it was so interesting because it was always dark crystal and labyrinth people always thought was scary labyrinth was my favorite movie as a kid so it was always like couldn't be me i love i love being scared by the puppets i guess also labyrinth is exceptionally funny and people don't mm -hmm. always talk about how funny it is like the bog of stench to me is hilarious yeah. and or you know the worm and his misses like that's hilarious too so you know labyrinth had a side of of kind of more overt humor than the dark crystal and i think you know that that people really do appreciate that yeah and i to dive a little bit into like just Hen the henson company as a whole i do think you guys still have this ability of it doesn't matter how old you are there are characters that you're just going to instantly like be like oh my god no that's that's kermit and like you can see a man standing there like i went to a show and he, this man was singing a uh, rainbow connection as kermit and I was like, no, that's just Kermit. And my friends were like, are you okay? Because I just fully was like, nah, that's not a man. Kermit the fuck is oh. so <laughs> But I do think it's, you know, a, something that the Henson Company does so well is that we believe all of these characters to be real, real in our world. Like, I was like, I could probably see Gonzo on the street and be like, there's Gonzo. For you, 
what is the joy of getting to see that continue that there are still these characters that no matter who you are you kind of see them as fully realized beings and not puppetry I think part of it is the fact that they were puppets because Mm -hmm. a puppet is a real thing in the real world and the camera shoots it and the light hits it so it's very different from CG and CG characters today look very very real Mm -hmm. but it's taken a while and in the meantime I think puppets have been able to outdo CG in terms of seeming that they exist in the real world so on the one hand you have that then on the other hand all the puppet characters are performed by actors who are puppeteers and the puppeteers are wonderful performers with real actor um, instincts and they are very sensitive and they are very funny and you know it's if you could have every animator be actually in its own animated character you know you might get some of the immediacy of performance but you don't really have that in animation it's many people touch that character we have many fewer people touch every Mm -hmm. character and we always have a principal performer who's doing the character. And that really comes through like the brilliance of the performance, you know, whether it's, um, you know, Frank Oz, who was at the time of Dark Crystal, he was certainly the most brilliant puppeteer in the world. And so when he puppeteers, uh, puppeteered Agra, you know, that's a performance. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, Frank Oz is still to this day. It's like, you can tell the minute they didn't CGI Yoda and he was a puppet again. Everyone was like, there's Yoda, he's back. And I do think it's a testament to kind of what the Jim Henson company has laid the groundwork of for puppetry. For you, for last question, I'm. it's kind of impossible for you because I know fans, we can do this. But for you, is there a character in either Just Dark Crystal or the entire Jim Henson company that you were like, this is the character I love getting to see come to life? I mean, one character more than any other yeah. character. Because <laughs> it's, my, oh it's my maybe God. impossible for you. <laughs> it is pretty It is pretty hard. And I actually, when we made the Dark Crystal series for Netflix, I probably had more joy seeing the new characters come to life because we created new characters and added them into the cast. So that was... That was a lot of fun, you know, um, those all those beautiful nude Gelfling, they they seem as real to me, like that character of Deet. That mm-hmm. is just a beautiful character. And probably seeing her come to life was was one of was so rewarding for me. Uh I I agree. I loved Deet. But uh, <laughs> thank you so much for talking with me today. The like I said earlier, the Jim Henson company has brought me so much joy in my life. So it's an honor to get to talk to you. Um, and thank you so much. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have a great one.